It's the day after the national final of Eurosong in Belgium and I'm sitting here next to the one and only winner, Gustav. How do you feel? Very excited. I don't know where I am and what time it is, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> oh my God, honey, your face when you won, that is a classic. I <laughs> that, I mean, that will be shown 10 years from now, still <laughs> on television. That was an out-of-body experience. I, I literally was looking at, at myself like, this is not happening. Who, who, where am I? Is this Belgium? I was just flabbergasted, I completely flabbergasted. It's happening, it's happening, and I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. You struggled so hard, and you got so much talent, and finally, finally, this is your moment. This is what you deserve. Do you feel that the same thing? Well, you're about to make me cry if you keep it up <laughs> like this. But yeah, yeah, I feel very proud because honestly, I also felt when I when I went for this, I was like, let's just give it a shot. But I was also like, I, I also had a fighting mentality, but also a fighting mentality in the sense like, we're gonna drown out all the noise. We're gonna focus on the message. I was given a platform and I thought it was very important to use it in a good way. So I wanted to use people from the ballroom scene. I wanted to use queer artists. I wanted to use drag artists. And I wanted to portray a message that was positive and that could be accepted by a lot of people. So it, it fills me with pride that I actually am able to do this. And when the world got me going crazy, I'll carry on. And it's so Why Because of You? This song, Because of You, I had written with Jawat Alul, a fellow queer artist who's amazing, amazing singer, amazing writer. And I thought this song could be really good uh, for your vision. The message is great. As an artist and from my core as a singer, I tend to be better in melancholic mm -hmm. and more moody kind of songs. So it was a challenge for me to be super up with this. But I thought that's a great challenge to face as a performer. And I think the song would, would work better in this kind of atmosphere in Eurovision, for sure. They'll never heal this fire, your love take me higher, so because of you, because of you. When I think of you, I think fashion. Yes. You're from Antwerp, Antwerp is the city of fashion. Have you already thought of some designers? Do you have some designers on speed dial? <laughs> speed dial, I wish, <laughs> I wish, honey, no, but, um, I have to say, working with Walter was really um, amazing to me because I think he's just, yeah, of course, he's a legend. That's Walter van Berenhoek. Yes, Walter van Berenhoek, yes. Um, and the outfit really worked. I think it really elevated the, the performance. It worked very well with the visual aspect of the, of the whole uh, staging. But uh, I think I definitely want to keep talking to Walter van Berenhoek and see what we can come up with. Uh, and I think, just in general, I think I want to for sure use Belgian designers for this uh, and, and use it in a fashion forward way. Nicky de Jager, what vond jij ervan? Nou, ik denk dit is een heel makkelijk antwoord. Oh, it is so heerlijk. Oh. It is gewoon RuPaul to the next level. Iedereen, iedereen gaat mee. Je krijgt iedereen mee. Schat, ik zeg alleen maar meer. Meer, 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 meer. <laughs> Nicky said, go bigger yeah do you know what she meant by that yeah i think we can still elevate the performance for sure i think now we had a, a very tight timing and and we had to like uh, limit ourselves maybe a little bit sometimes but i think the blueprint is here for the performance but i think we can stylistically elevate the whole thing and i think dynamically we can elevate the whole thing where i think now we were um we sequestered on those little uh, stairs which was lovely but i do think it's going to be an even bigger stage of course on eurovision and we need to elevate that element of it but i would love to keep the blueprint of this performance how do you prepare for eurovision oh good question I'll tell you in <laughs> three months now. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna definitely do is I'm gonna clear my schedule so there's enough also mental space for me to really process everything. I think I'm gonna do some research, more research than I already did about stuff that, that's good to do on Eurovision. And I think just uh, staying focused on this performance, it's gonna be a long ride, but I think it's also a matter of um, 
keeping that message alive and keeping the the concept of that message alive. So I think it's going to be uh, a, a good ride. Yeah. Knowing you, I just have to ask, but um, I, I imagine you as a, as a young Steph uh, practicing in front of the mirror, like doing interviews and stuff like that. Are, are you the kind of person who does that? I'm the kind of yes, person who would do yes. that. I did. Well, for me, it was more, it was not so, but interviews, I'm sure I did interviews, I'm <laughs> sure. But for me, it was really obsessive uh, 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 dancing and singing along to MTV. Okay. I think I was, yeah. I was one of those kids that was brought up with MTV when I came home and just put on MTV. I just remember like trying to emulate every video I saw and dancing around the, you know, the, the, the table in, 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 the, in the living room. But yeah, it's something that I def I think the, the kid in me was very happy yeah. last night. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who's your biggest inspiration? Oof, that's a big question because there's so many people. I grew up in the era of the superstars. You know, I had Michael Jackson, Madonna, Prince, George Michael, you know, Whitney Houston. It was just like the era of the superstar. But if I have to pick one as a child, it's Madonna. I was the Who's That Girl tour. I knew by heart from beginning to end. I could sing and dance the whole the whole video. So yeah, you, you, there's also a video online you doing Madonna yes. as a child, right? Yes. It was a playback show. I remember when I did that. I was seven years old. This video and, and my mother told me maybe you won't win, maybe you won't be the highest, but you just have fun on stage. And as a kid, you're like, okay. <laughs> So I had fun on stage and then I won. And my faith on this video when I won, it's really like I just won the Grand National or something. It's crazy. And my mom said, that face you made as a seven-year-old, I saw that face last night again when I was so in shock. It's the same face. So it's yeah. a beautiful story. It's like a full circle moment there. Yeah, but your mother is also, I think, your biggest ambassador. I mean, my <laughs> husband my husband met uh, a guy who was apparently the hairdresser of your mother yeah. uh, yesterday yeah. in the bar. And uh, this hairdresser guy was saying, oh, his mother, is she cannot shut up about, <laughs> about Steph. <laughs> well, yeah, my mom is a great ambassador. And she also has, I think I never had a chance to not be gay because my mom is just a natural. She is surrounded by gay people. She even put her two best friends together and they got married so yeah she's really a matchmaker a gay matchmaker <laughs> what is the one thing that Europe should know about you I'm bringing a message of hope I'm bringing a message of self-acceptance a queer message but a universal message about accepting yourself and being proud of who you are and thanking the people around you who brought you there and I'm so thankful for that thank yeah you. thank you so much for your time for your interview and for your talent to share it with us all thank you.